Welcome to another highly questionable extravaganza. What do you like most on the show today, Bomani? Wait. All right. Very good. Dale, papi. Is that what just pumping up his guy, or could Deshaun Watson really be the NFL's Michael Jordan? This is a laughably ridiculous thing to say that only Dabo Swinney believes, but it leads the show because it's a laughably ridiculous thing to say. Listen to the energetic champion. You change a culture through, for me, it's through discipline and recruiting and staffing and, and all that stuff. Uh, you know, for them, it's it's decision making. It's who you it's who you pick, and uh, you know. I'm just telling you, they pass on Deshaun Watson, uh, they're passing on Michael Jordan. I mean, I'm just telling you. I mean, all the places he could go with this guy is someone I love and I want to gas up, and it's nice that I can gas him up. But keep in mind, Tom Brady's not the NFL's Michael Jordan. You can't be the NFL's Michael Jordan because nobody in sports can be Michael Jordan again because Michael Jordan did things we haven't seen anybody do. Now, to be fair to Dabo, maybe the point he's making is if you pass on him, you will later regret it like the Sam Bowie, Michael Jordan thing, right? Maybe it's just that simple. Maybe, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't think he was making it that simple. In fairness to Deshaun Watson, though, he did win a national championship at Clemson. And I mean, damn, if you won a national championship at Clemson, somebody told you 10 years before that some quarterback would lead Clemson to a national championship, you would assume that he was a superhero. I can see why Dabo Swinney would be like, yo, look what this dude did. You know, he didn't specify. Was he talking about Michael Jordan in basketball or Michael Jordan in baseball? There's a difference, you know? <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe yeah, you talk about the dude who played Apollo Creed's son, right? <laughs> oh, for the love of God. I mean, it's possible, <laughs> right? Like, if he's talking about that Michael Jordan, he's on the way up with great potential for the future. He's more likely to become that Michael Jordan than the one Dabo's talking about. By the way, all this shade for Deshaun Watson when all he did was show up and have his coach talk nice about him. Way to go, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Do you think the NFL will really change the rules on recreational and marijuana use? It seems obvious that the rules are going to change on this, but the NFL is going to get something in return for this because this is going to be negotiated. The NFLPA is coming to the NFL now and saying we need less punitive measures on marijuana use. That makes sense to everyone as this stigma falls in America, but I would ask you, if you're in any kind of pain, if your neck hurts, if your back hurts, the way that you walk around daily and you're debilitated, Think about how these players feel on Monday and Tuesday. If there's anything that soothes that pain that's this kind of harmless, you kind of got to allow it in that barbaric sport. Well, then there's the other part, too. You can make it about pain management, but people just smoke a weed because they feel like it isn't really causing them too many problems either. I like name one positive the NFL has gotten out of this prohibition. Here's the only thing, though. We talk about the changing standards in society and the stigma is falling. I don't know if you guys have been reading the news, but uh, it's a new sheriff in town. Let's see how it goes as things go a few months down the line, because the current government might not be so keen on America's game letting this slide. This could really hurt my clean urine business. You know that? Uh -huh. Oh, right. That's yeah, right. It would affect it. It would. It would cripple it. I'm telling it. you, that's yeah. right. The NFL cool. guys love him. Yeah, he'd go bankrupt. He'd have a going out of business sale on his urine. It would be really super cheap. That's fair. Do the Celtics need to suspend Marco Smart? Ah, uh, yes, this game where the Wizards showed up wearing black because they said it was a funeral or something like that. And Marcus Smart apparently was like, oh, it's a funeral. Then someone must act out. I'll be that guy. Here we are. There was some, uh... He wanted to go back in the game and he had played 12 consecutive minutes or something like that. So he starts arguing with I never all. act like that when I'm getting a break. Like, right fast? Like, you said I can go outside and come back? Cool. One of the assistant coaches, Smart, not happy, and he throws the towel down. And then just yeah, all right. Is that my man Walter McCarty? Off of the court. Saturansky drives. Yeah, everybody's yelling at everybody there. Under a minute to I wonder what that last thing is he said right there to the dude that people are going to say it looks like me. It does seem a little odd, considering all it was was you can't go into the game right now, and then he goes to the locker room. This isn't really a suspension-worthy thing, though. Like, if it was something that was insubordinate, I could hear you when talking about a suspension. That just seemed like a dude who was a bit too charged up and everybody going back and forth. Best-case scenario there was probably Marcus Martin going to the back to get himself right. My question, though, is 
Why did you need to get yourself right about that? He's an emotional player under all circumstances, and that was actually an emotional game that was frustrating to them because they lost to a team that was making a big show of wanting to beat them. But if you're going to suspend Marcus Smart, the assistant coach was just as heated as he is. I, I would imagine that people would be surprised at how often this happens when we don't see it. Alonzo Mourning used to get in the face of Pat Riley all the time in private. It's something a lot of people couldn't imagine. Well, he should have shown that kind of energy against Bradley Beal. You know, he had uh, about yeah. 31 points, you know. Yeah, I mean, that would have been good if he had shown that kind of hostility in the general range of where Beal was shooting the basketball. If you're going to suspend Marcus Smart, do it for the hair. If you're not going to suspend him for the hair, I don't know what he's got to do to get sat down. Should Michigan be allowed to pay three assistant coaches over $1 million per year when their players get nothing? This is embarrassing, and it feels a lot like a lot of people making money on top of unpaid labor at the height of injustice. It comes to light because it's a public university, and there was a Freedom of Information Act request that results in three assistants, Bomani, not even just two, not just the offensive coordinator, not just the defensive coordinator, but something that I didn't know existed in college football. A passing coordinator named Pep Hamilton, passing coordinator getting a million dollars. It's offensive if you care at all about justice. Yeah, but let's think about this on another level, though, right? One of the arguments that people make for not paying the players is, well, we want to level the playing field out, right? That's the argument behind the salary cap in the NFL also. How come no one has ever broached the idea of a salary cap on the coaches? Why? Because you don't hate the coaches. It's only the players that you actually hate. But if you actually cared about leveling the playing field, you look at Michigan, which has basically said, we'll spend whatever it takes to get back over Ohio State. And you'd say, hey, maybe everybody should be able to spend money on the same level. But you'll never do that because you don't hate the coaches. Well, Tricky Nick is going to start paying four coaches a million dollars, you know. So, you know, he wants to beat Michigan at all all fronts. That's it. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. He's going to tell Sarkeesian, hey, look, just go into the ashtray of my car. Go ahead and grab a million that we're not paying the players and just add it to your salary. Did last night's upsets make you more interested in college basketball? Yes, indeed. The number one team in the country lost yesterday. The number two team in the country lost yesterday. The number four team in the country lost yesterday. And I had no idea who the top four in the country were until I got to work and they told me that all these things happened and we were going to talk about it on television. There's a very tree in the forest sort of element here. Villanova lost to Marquette. Kansas lost to West Virginia. You saw Kentucky lost to Tennessee. The question is, how much were you watching before? Because if you weren't watching watching before, do you care that they lost after? Well, something that I'm always interested in is when a heavy favorite or a top-ranked team is going into one of these opposing places where it's crazy the way that West Virginia was crazy last night or crazy the way that Tennessee was last night. But I feel like I speak for most when I say this will be super seismic and important when it happens to wreck your pool in March. That's when you'll start to pay attention the way we would be paying attention last night if we actually cared. Hey, can I get some credit for getting all those teams and all those games right as opponents? Because yeah. you weren't sure yes, about that. I damn yes, sure wasn't sure yeah. about that. Nice clap, job. pops, clap. Nice job. There Woo-hoo. we go. Are you buying it when Manhattan coach Steve Macielo blames his team and struggles on a fraudulent society? Now, you need to understand the man that's talking about a fraudulent society is also the guy who lied and said he got a degree from Kentucky on his resume when he did not. Anyway, let him, Steve Macielo, join in in the chorus of old people saying that everything is wrong with these millennials. We're a fraudulent society, top to bottom. Our society's fraudulent. Everything about our society is edited. Everything about our society is uh, prearranged. So this generation is a fraudulent generation. And what I mean by that is, you know, they, they put their Instagram picture up the way they want. They put their tweet out the way they want. Nothing is interactive, nothing is um, real. For me, I can't speak for other coaches. I, I see it more than ever. When adversity comes in, people struggle. They're not bad kids. They're not, they, they're, I, I have 14, this might be one of my favorite groups I've ever had. They struggle with adversity. They struggle with, that's a byproduct of our society today. So I think think we're a reflection of our, our culture a little bit, not to get too deep. Now, I don't think the idea of how everything can be edited and manipulated into people's own image of themselves, I don't think that that is somewhat interesting. I also think we have to remember Every single generation of middle-aged people have said the exact same thing about the young people. They just came up with a different reason. 
That is excellent analysis, deep and profound. I just want to talk about what a sad press conference that had to be to attend. They're 7 and 14. You're sitting there saying, I've got a journalism degree, and I'm at a Jasper's press conference. Listen to this gas bag who couldn't even get his resume right when he was applying at the University of South Florida. Tell me about how fraudulent this society is. My God, I would have been sobbing till dehydrated if I'd had to cover that guy's words. Well, think about that. If you're covering Manhattan, that means you're trying to live in Manhattan on the salary that you get paid oh, no. to cover oh, Manhattan. Nothing. Sadder still. You have a roommate or two. <laughs> Seven of 14. Yeah. My God, I think he's a fraud, you know? <laughs> there you Seven go. Seven of 14. There you my go. God. My father cutting right to it. You got profound analysis. You got wacky court jester jokes, and my father cut right to it. Coming up next on Highly Questionable. No braids are back. By the way, he's over 50%. It seems like he's getting better. And then he shot the air ball, which, I mean, I can't say is worse. Yeah, a little short on that one. Everyone Ooh, is uh, Let me tell you, the last place I want to do something like that is in front of a comedian. And then he does, does it again. Time to play the game that this a Caucasian woman do you question. You give us topics and events, we question them. Do you question blazing your own trail? We're going to a mountain in Utah. Some dude named Devin. All right. You think it's like Devin Booker, like Devin George? Oh, look at this. He's following the tracks, following the tracks, and Devin to do. He's just gonna fly off something here, right? Yeah, here we go. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, uh, okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Uh. Yeah, totally, thank who? That's totally horrifying. Just thank you. I guess he's just graceful, grateful for living. Yeah, that seems like an enormous fall. That's a cushiony fall, though. Yeah, Boundary. that doesn't seem to be a lodge or anything like that. Just people out here skiing without supervision, which, I mean, seems like a great way to freeze to death. Well, that was really nothing. Look at this now. Oh, let's see. That's right. Oh. Well, I mean, of course, compared to this, yeah, I mean, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yes, right. okay. That, I mean, Boom. yeah, my father is correct. That was, right. compared to this, really nothing. Like, I, I'm curious, did he do that to himself, or is this an episode of, like, Russian Snapped? Yeah. Saw Devin, something like that on the other night. You want to appreciate, you want to make my father appreciate what you did, Devin? Do it while on fire. That's right. Okay, what do you mean? Do you question if this was cool? We're going to the Korean Basketball All-Star Game. Now, I'm struggling to deal with this idea that Korean sports have so much more swag than American <laughs> sports. Whole new level here, baby. Come check this out. Really? Oh, doing that girl Sarah. is a real crowd pleaser. They're doing mannequin challenge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get back into the game. Yeah. And then there's a haphazard behind the back dribble. And then the pass is stolen going back the other way. Okay, um, just one comment real quick. That was fun, but the basketball being played right here and right now as there still was better than the basketball they were playing when they were moving. Well, someone missed a golden opportunity to pick up that bolt and dunk it. Yes. That's right. You got to do that. You got to be, have to be yeah, such yeah. a jerk to be the no. dude to mess no. up something no. like that no. just because you no. wanted to. You got to be the rogue rebel who gets his one chance to dunk in a Korean All-Star game and says, bleep you and bleep your mannequin challenge. Watch this. Woo! I hope he get low bridged. Do you question the Andres adjustment? Okay, what kind of adjustment? Is he at the free throw line? Are we going to make fun of DeAndre Jordan at the free throw line? Yeah, oftentimes we just talk rebounds. He's no back. By the way, he's over 50%. It seems like he's getting better. But then he shot the air ball, which, I mean, I can't say is worse. Yeah, a little short on that one. Everyone Ooh, is uh, Let me tell you, the last place I want to do something like that is in front of a comedian. And then he does it, does it again. Uh, one thing we don't make enough of 
how good he must be at all this other stuff that the Clippers are like, we just have to put up with that. Well, he could have been worse. Look at this now. Oh, oh Joe Kim Noah. Yeah, Goodness. that was amazing. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, he knew it immediately. Yeah, I mean, how could he knew it? I mean, we all did. We all knew it at the same moment. See my chin, stupid, and my ring, stupid. Girl, I'm not stupid, but my nut, stupid. Upset, stupid. VVS stupid. Yell, you know, it's puppy. And my diamonds fruity. See my chain stupid. And my ring stupid. Yell, I'm not stupid. But my nut stupid. Upset stupid. VVS stupid. Yell, you know, it's puppy. And my diamonds fruity. Highly questionable this broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that looks amazing in a speedo. See? Oh, no. And Espido, you tell us what to watch on television tonight. We tell you if we're intrigued or not. Fox Sports New Orleans, Thunder and Pelicans. The worldwide hissing radiator anger tour of Russell Westbrook continues. I'm not interested in this particular game, but let's check in with Westbrook the other day when they were playing against Utah, and he didn't like how George Hill was guarding him. That's one way to handle that. I'm just, I feel like that, yeah. yeah. You hit him in the face. Oh, 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 that hurts. Okay, let me just take a shot. This is as good a shot as any we're going to get on this possession. And, of course, it goes right in because everything Russell Westbrook is doing this season is amazing. Bomani, are you intrigued? So is him making that jumper a testament to his concentration because he can see through the fact he just got hit in the face? Or Russell Westbrook getting hit in the face shooting a jumper might be more effective than Russell Westbrook being wide open shooting a jumper. <laughs> Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Are you kidding me? I'm going to for the Pelicans all the way. You know, I love the Pelicans. You know, they beat LeBron and the Cavaliers. And, you know, yeah. what happened after the game with LeBron? He yeah. began crying in the yeah. locker room and, you know, blaming everybody but himself. <laughs> I wanted another player. You know, I wanted another guy that is going to help me out. Oh. I want them to spend another uh, $50 million. Oh. You know, uh, that's what I need. <laughs> about the Pelicans and the Thunder. How did it become about LeBron wailing? And how does he sound so much like a kazoo? <laughs> On ESPN, Warriors and Hornets. Uh, sure, I like watching the Warriors play, but let's check in with Zaza Pachulia. He got into a fight the other day. Not a fight, but there was some dirtiness with Luke Babbitt. This right here. It's an escalation. Look at that. Right there. That was a double technical situation. Luke Babbitt gave him some of that. And then Zaza gave him. There it is, an eye rake on Luke Babbitt. Babbitt chucks him with the shoulder. Yeah. There you go. I feel like that's a pretty good thing. Uh, a pretty good thing to put in a bottle and just explain Zaza's entire career to people years from now. Bomani, are you intrigued? I mean, we've discussed this already. But that was Luke Babbitt on a basketball court. Yeah, I know it has was, nothing to do with the Warriors and the Hornets, but give me a minute to yeah, come to grips with the fact that that still happens. I don't understand it, really. He's starting for the Miami Heat. Do you realize how much I miss those LeBron, Dwayne, and Chris Bosh days? Oh. That's starting for the Heat. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued because I was a turning point in the entire game when Luke Bobby got hit in the face. I'm telling you something, Sasa. You better be careful with Kemba Walker because if you do the same thing to him, the same thing is going to happen to your team. They are going to, it's going to be the turning point on that game, and you're going to lose again. The Golden State is going to lose again. So if I were the Steve Kerr, I'll keep him on the bench. Did I sell it? No. On the Smithsonian Channel, Crazy Monster. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Deep on the ocean floor, the Sand Striker, or Bobbit Worm, waits with multiple mouth parts displayed, bone hard grappling hooks poised to pierce and immobilize prey. As night falls, Many sand strikers emerge to feast. But fish are fast, and the sand strikers are feeding blind. They don't have eyes or a brain. They react only if one of their antennae is triggered or if a shadow lingers. 
gotcha. Anything on the seabed is fair game. Gone in seconds. Massacre over. The strikers withdraw to digest. Until the next time. Skip Bayless of the sea. Bomani, are you intrigued? I mean, are those fish new to the neighborhood? Like, I'm a little confused <laughs> as to how it is that you might know that this is possible. Like, nah, I'm going to go low to the ground. <laughs> no, it's not what you want. <laughs> Let me see if I swim near that thing that has multiple mouths. That keeps cheese. jumping, uh, right? <laughs> Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued, police. And what is the name of that show? What is the name of that show? I sea Monsters? Yeah, Sea Monsters. I, I, you know, I, I have another monster. name for Crazy this show. Monster. That's right. I have another name for that show. Fish Murder. Okay. That's right. Fish Murder. That's right. Fish Murder CSI. It's could, CIS. Honestly, could be a rapper. I mean, yeah. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. Hey, I just got a new contract proposal from ESPN. Oh, wow. He's driving a hard bargain. Yeah, he wants more. I should have tried that. Get him another playmaker.